All right, well, let's dive in a little bit into kind of understanding this agent orchestration. So there are some examples out here, actually, of some different types. I'm actually going to look at just creating a very simple version of a crew and uh, show you a little bit about what they do. So first things first is we really have to kind of install the system, okay? Now I actually uh, have some Conda environments running already. So uh, I prefer to use Conda, but you can also use Poetry with uh, Crew AI. Uh, if you're not familiar with any of these, uh, they're kind of fundamental starting points because they kind of isolate your environment. There's a lot of different ways and people have a lot of opinions on these. So, uh, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with, I'm always about what makes sense to use and what gets the job done. Not trying to push any particular type of um, build tool system here. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, pip install crew AI. Oops. If I still like to have a little bit of control of these because I'm, I'm building a lot of them and all right, now that that's there, I'm gonna activate that environment. I'm gonna run that command again. See if uh, we shouldn't have any conflicts now in the base environment because we've been able to do some work with uh, uh, this in the past. So after we put this all up and get this all installed, what I want to talk to you a little bit about is how do these uh, tasks come about. So first, I always look at this as kind of a UX activity because it's really thinking about uh, the plan for what you want your agents to do. So if you were to think about this uh, in the concept, concept of kind of putting together one of these systems, uh, what you really need to think about is... <clears throat> Sorry, one second here, lost my screen. What you really need to think about is what is the flow of content that I want, excuse me, what is the flow of the agents that I'm trying to do? Like what is the end output? So when I'm planning a new crew, I really just do a kind of quick path, uh, quick thought process on what do I want the crew to accomplish? what are my end goals and really thinking about <clears throat> what uh, what do I want as the output along the way what services do I intend to consume uh, for my crew And I'm not so concerned about the how because the nice part about using agentic systems like this is you don't have to be concerned about that because the crew is ultimately going to do that itself. So now that I have kind of a plan, this is just kind of a, a, nor, a short structured plan that I follow when I'm thinking about this, is let's create a crew that's just going to go out to the web and do that research task that i said so our main objective <clears throat> another good way to think about this is what's the main objective is to create a series of agent based ais that are going to search for uh, information on google abc Google ABC's companies, just as an example here. Now, I don't know all of the stuff that's gonna ultimately come out of understanding, uh, out of doing the research. I won't know what I'm gonna encounter as I go. Uh, but I do like to think about that a little bit when I'm constructing these crew systems. I really like to think about what are the potentialities 
that I'm going to run into as I'm building out my system structures. Second here. So, if we take a look here and think about the steps that would be involved in building a crew system, or excuse me, doing this task normally, uh, you would have a group of researchers with specialties all doing multiple tasks. So with crew AI, what you can think about is these agents are specialists in an area. And in that area, they may have many tasks that they can perform. So I always like to look at this as just even the analog form is okay. So I'm probably gonna have a senior researcher. I'll probably have a senior writer and I'll probably have a senior uh, data analyst for my team. Okay, so my team is going to go out uh, and I need these roles for the AIs to be able to understand, to be able to conduct the research uh, in a very formulaic way. So now that I have those, I'm going to go ahead and produce senior researcher. Uh, let's think a little bit about relationship of how these tasks flow for people. So senior researcher is going to do what? Well, they are going to identify areas to research. They are going to possibly review material. Uh, they are going to find types of material. And they're probably going to uh, confer with the writer and analyst to determine if they have the right material. Okay. Now, in addition to that, let's think about the test traditionally the writer's doing. They are most likely going to compile the research. They are going to compile uh, cited data. I always like to keep my data cited as much as possible so that I can understand where it came from. That's a big thing in the AI world that uh, transparency is so important on a lot of the data sources. Um, they're going to write the end article. Okay, right? So they're probably going to actually produce the end piece of content that's necessary for people to be able to use this. So let's get started here. One more is they may also identify new areas. Now that's a possibility. Uh, I'm going to try and limit that in my crew here, but it's possible that I could do that. Now the senior data analyst is actually, I'm going to switch these around order wise, just so I can think about them and how you would do this. Now with crew, you can do sequential processes, which is what this is here, or hierarchical. Um, but we're gonna focus on the sequential process. I found the most value in that right now. And also it gives you a little bit more control over doing some of the work. So senior data analyst, from here, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, give them what their tasks are. And you know, they are compiling and understanding the material sent to them. They may be looking for insights about the material as well. Okay. So uh, that's, that's good for now. So if we think about how that's coming together with these different types of uh, agents in our flow, you can think of it very much like you would with the traditional research team. So we have the researcher, everyone's doing that, and they have various roles that they're gonna be assigned. Now, if you go back to where I was talking about before, previously, is these agents have the ability to use tools. 
Now, these tools have to be used in the context of tasks, right? So if you think about tasks, you really think about like, what are the additional pieces that actually have to happen in order to do this? So they're going to identify areas to research. Okay, so this means find a source or multiple sources and determine if it's valuable or important to our objective. All right. After that, we're going to look at, you know, collecting, reviewing the material, making sure it's ready to go for the analyst. So we can continue to break this down. And as you do this more and more, you're going to start to discover that it becomes a little bit second nature to do some of this. And there's a lot of reusability and, and, and modularity in what we're doing. So I'm actually going to switch over here for a second. I'm going to grab just a simple code example. Just 